You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. You're listening to the Horror Ramblings Podcast, the show about all things horror. (laughs) We hope you enjoy the show. This is the Horror Ramblings Podcast, the show about all things horror. I am your host, Lester Blosser, joined by my co-host and good friend, the extremely talented Stephen White. How are you doing today, Stephen? I am doing fantastic. How are you? You know, not too bad, not too bad. I have to admit, it is snowing where I'm at right now, which is just mind-blowing. Yeah, that's uh, that's terrible. I'm, I'm glad you, well... I don't want to say I'm glad you have. I'm glad it's there. It's not here. It's cold and wet here, but not not snow, but we're close. You know, I, I think this is going to be our tradition when we open the show. We'll, we'll just talk about the weather a little bit because it's Why so not? different where we, where we each are. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I am curious about something. Shoot. You know, I, I've, I've talked about I've talked about you graciously putting me on, you know, pencil paper productions. But I have to ask, mm-hmm. where'd you get the name? That's the name. what I'm curious about. Okay, well, uh, it actually, believe it or not, I have been doing this since 2004, but the name itself did not originate until 2005. I had originally used the moniker Diamond Pictures uh, and Diamond Productions, mainly because that kind of rolled back to something that a buddy of mine from high school and I kind of came up with, because we would do a little comics and i mean we're big comic fanatics marvel comics dc image and all that stuff so we started creating our own stuff and we thought we need we need our own moniker you know we need to be something comics and he came up with diamond comics and i was like all right cool diamond comics that's what it is so everything was diamond comics this diamond comics that so when naturally the film thing started i thought diamond pictures and about a year in kind of found out that there was a diamond pictures and um it it how do I put this delicately? Uh, it uh, its main primary focus was um, homosexual porn, and I thought, I, you know, oh, okay, that I, I'll let them have that. I'll let them have that. That I will change it and and find something that suits me better. They can do whatever they want. That's fine. I got nothing. I got no problem with it. But I don't want there to be any kind of assumption that I'm doing that with my movies and then people be like so you you got this movie called man cave is that about you get the picture (laughs) so yeah so the idea came to me and it was just like all right so what what would i come up with what would i use as a moniker that speaks to me because everybody has something you take a look at every film franchise or every production company i guess you should say there's an element to it that relates to the per the people Something about that, like one of the ones that I always took note of, and while well, we're talking about terrible people, but I, this is only the first one that kind of came to mind. Uh, there was a production company, Bad Hat Hair, and it was formed, I think, by Brian Singer, maybe a couple of other people. Now, Brian Singer is a piece of shit. We know that. So we're going to move on from that. But he was a avid Jaws fan. And there's a line in Jaws that says that some bad hat, Harry, that's where he got the name. So that meant something to him. And it was using that kind of idea. Okay, well, that meant something in. There was something about that. What do I want to use? I could never come up with anything like right off the top of my head, no lines, no movies, anything that just really gelled. But then it came to me when I realized that what am I always using? What do I always use to create? I got a pencil and I got paper. I have drawn so much. I have notebooks filled with drawings, sketches, stories, everything. And it all started with a pencil and a piece of paper. And then I thought, well, there you go. That's it. Pencil and paper productions that is super awesome that's how it how it came about you know i uh i was going to do my own little production thing uh several several years back never really got off the ground with it but you know i'm an elm street fan Mm -hmm. and uh i normally do most of my work when it's like dark out and everything so i was thinking dark elm productions that was sort of the the thing that i come up with but yeah to, to take something that you use every day and use it for something like that that's that's an awesome way to do things. Yeah. I mean, and I, I'm happy to be, you know, a part of that now to, to have, you know, been welcomed into that. I think that's super awesome that that is happening. 
Yeah. But yeah, I, I would say it was a good call on the the diamond thing. Yeah. I, I would I would say. Again, that <laughs> they I, I've got no problem with it. Just not something I want my productions to be associated with in that context that, you know, I don't want people to think that my stuff is that stuff. And yeah, I understand. Again, no, no, <laughs> there's there's no problems with uh I have no problems with the gay community. I'm trying to get that out of my mouth without it yeah. sounding like I'm being a jerk or something like that. Absolutely no problem with it. Of In course. fact, more the merrier on uh, uh, our podcast listeners. Oh yeah. Be you. And you know, honestly, as a as a bit of a joke, because I've heard a joke like this somewhere, this this guy had the same name as a um a porn star who hmm. performed in those kind of shows. And he said, you know, he said, I'll, I'll let them have that win because I don't want anybody accidentally clicking on the wrong website. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which kind of makes sense. Kind of yeah. makes sense. So, you know, you see where I'm coming from. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But at least I, I can say that I own the the Google search. Like if you yeah. were to type in pencil paper productions, boom, you're going to see my stuff. You type in anything that I kind of associated with, boom, it's right there. I got number one Google search on that. Yes, so. you do. Yes, mm. you do. I've, I've been... I've been checking the website out even more here lately. I I, I am that one that, you know, if, if you've been noticing any weird traffic on there lately, that, that's probably me. Oh. I've been checking out shows and everything. And and since you brought it up, I'm going to direct you to something new that I added because I'm already I've still I've still got quite a few uh, pages under a draft status because I'm trying to update and I want to I want to make sure that when I launch them. You're getting the full picture of what I was talking about, the stories behind them and so on. And I've fallen a little behind for when it started, but I was actually able to finish a project that I was wanting to do and uh, how to, how to describe it. So you're going to find this. If you go to the website, pencilpaperproductions.com, there are tabs at the top extras. If you drop down, there's a section called the vault. Now this is stuff that, I kind of a one-off or projects that never really got made or maybe projects that I was working with other people on. That's, that's kind of what this is or that section is about, you know, just things that either didn't really take off or uh, I was working on with someone else. Now there was a short that I did in 2005 with a buddy of mine, uh, Patrick Ricks, who we've actually worked on a few other things together. In fact, one of his short features uh, punchline for the reptoids is on or in that section of the vault because he wanted me to edit it. And I was always kind of like his go-to editor. And I helped him with another film called Cult and one before that called Hurt, which is also on the 2004 archive, I think it is. It was in the remasters that I also did. Anyway, the, the short that he did called Cult was one thing that he did. And then he wrote like a companion piece to it called The Follower. And I kind of explain all that on the website. So I won't go into great detail about the stories of these things. So if you want to know more about these shorts, it's on the site. But The Follower was something that we never put out on YouTube. We never put out anywhere. And I found like an old DVD that it was burned on and it was like in four segments, like it had been broken down into four segments. So it was never full or never completely whole. And I was able to retrieve them off the DVD. I did my best to clean it up as because it was compressed, you know, being on a DVD and stuff like that. So I did my best to make it look somewhat decent, added a few little things here and there. I tightened up some of the editing because that was another problem we had with that production is my editing skills at the time. I was probably maybe a year in. I hadn't quite found my my groove and I could tell a lot of the pacing was like, my God, what, did, what was I doing? So, <laughs> I mean, even looking back on it now, it's, it's an, it's a time capsule. That's all I can say about it. I can't look at it as some lost gem that I've completely restored and put out into the world. It's not even on my main feed on my YouTube page. You can only find it there on the website. So the follower is what it's called. 30 minutes of your time. If you want to check it out, I've added some music, some little things to kind of, you know, punch it up a little bit as best I could, but there's only so much I could do with what I had. Hey, if people can check it out, you know, it's, it's worthwhile to even take a look just because it might not, you know, be up to the standard that you think it should be. Doesn't mean that it's not something worthwhile. After editing our first episode, I, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of understand that one. I, I know we're, uh, in the process of getting this show 
off its foundation and everything and hmm. building it up. So it's going to be a work in progress, but I, I guess I could say we're kind of like slashers from the old eighties films. We'll, uh, we'll just keep coming back. I guess. That's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I dig it. But I figured we'd uh, get started here with something a little different tonight. Mm -hmm. I've been watching a lot of horror movies lately, and uh, it seems like there are so many different subgenres of oh, horror. Oh, yeah. Films. And it's a lot different than it was even 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. There are different movies coming out now, different concepts, and it's a good thing that they're creating more subgenres because that just proves that horror is alive and thriving. Oh, yeah. That dark, that dark heart is beating and it is pumping blood. So I thought we would talk maybe about some subgenres tonight. And we talk about some subgenres that we like. Okay. And uh, some subgenres that eh, we, we might not like so much. I do. Now, now, I know when I was little, you had Supernatural. You had monster movies. Mm -hmm. Creature features, which were a little different. Uh, you had slasher films, which mm -hmm. is one of my favorite things of all time. Oh, yeah. I guess you could you could maybe count ghost stories as their own thing. Maybe the haunted house vibe i guess i mean I teeters in the supernatural a little bit i guess it depends and, that could be like subgenre genres that just and, kind of and branch that, off and that's where we are yeah. i'm just when i was little there were like three <laughs> three yeah, different subgenres and now it's like it's branched off you know i remember when uh vampires werewolves and zombies were all the same genre it was all in the monster movie genre and now all of those have branched off and they've been made into their own thing yeah and i don't know when that happened exactly but it it did happen hmm. the more i'm sitting here thinking about it as you as you mentioned as time passed new subgenres have come up found footage i know that's a yeah. that's a thing now and i guess that's the only one that popped into my head <laughs> but now i that's one now I have a list in front of me here. I'm going to okay. read this list to you because they have they have all these different like they're like main genres and things that might classify within them. Okay. And I'm going to try to read this kind of fast. I'm not going to do like a ton in it. But the main genres that I have here are gore and disturbing, psychological, killer, which I would also consider just like slasher, monster and paranormal. Now, each of these has another genre attached to it. Multiple Okay. Uh, to give to give you to give you an example, uh, the gore and disturbing has um, like torture type movies, uh, splatter, which is basically you know really just aggressive films. Sure. Uh, one of the examples that they have is I Spit on Your Grave. Okay, I can see that. Um, cannibal movies. Okay, and then extreme. And uh, I guess to to bring back something from another episode, something like a Serbian film would be considered sure extreme. With psychological, you have phobia type movies. Mm -hmm. um madness and paranoia mm -hmm. kind of a that, that's kind of a stretch i would say uh, yeah and then this one kind of borders on both of them home invasion and survival i didn't think about that category yeah no i, I but hmm. i mean wouldn't that kind of classify in some others you know because i mean i would think michael myers kind of home invade <laughs> But well, and I, I'm sure they mean like the what is it? The Strangers, I think it's the one that I'm yes, thinking the of. Strangers, yeah, where they come in and so I, it's not the same, but I see. They, I guess I get where they're going. They also have um, funny games. Okay, yeah, funny games. That, I think that was the one I was thinking of. That that is definitely a home invasion movie. Yeah, let's see. I'm I'm gonna try to read through this real quick. I, I wasn't gonna do them all, but I'll just read through them real quick. Yeah. Um, under the killer category, you've got slasher, crime, um, bumpkin, and redneck. Apparently, is its <laughs> own thing. So, would not uh, spit on your grave kind of fit in that category a little bit? Along maybe with, like, a little bit. I I would think. I would think. Um, neo monsters, okay. animals in nature, small creatures like gremlins and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then we get into monsters. Um, you've got zombies. You've got undead zombies, and they even have another category now, virus. I'm guessing that's, you know, uh, World War Z, movies like that. Yeah. They're not necessarily dead people. Um, vampire, werewolf, classic and mythological, giant monsters. Mm -hmm. And then we've got this. I don't know why this sort of um, this sort of goes between paranormal and monster for some reason on the list, but sci-fi and alien. I guess See, there could be... <sighs> That's a tough call for me sometimes, okay? Like even giant monsters, they're trying to say that. I know that I have seen Godzilla films in horror sections before, and I, 
even I think even on Amazon Prime, I've seen them mm-hmm. listed under the horror category, or or maybe even HBO Max. If I'm not even and see, mistaken. I don't see I don't see that. I don't no, see I don't Godzilla either. as it's more of like an action movie to me, like a science fiction action movie. Sci-fi, almost. yeah. To me, yeah. that's where it belongs. I feel like it it centers itself better. Now, the original, maybe you could yeah. put. I could see that classifying in a horror genre because of the nature of the film but every subsequent movie it's giant monsters smacking each other around science fiction just seems to fit the category better than horror oh yeah most definitely and the only movie i can think of that's like a giant monster movie that i guess you could sort of consider horror is um cloverfield yeah okay i guess guess you could combine that with the uh the found footage angle and and you could do it with small creatures too because there's a scene in that where they're down underground and there's these small little monsters that's true chase them chase them down and then paranormal we're almost done with this we've got uh witches and the occult Mm -hmm. devil demon hell movies uh possession haunted house ghosts and spirits is the last one now that's a lot of different categories Mm-hmm. under other categories and to me a lot of that stuff is just roped in together yeah that's as far as i'm concerned too. yeah i feel like you could really classify you're, you're breaking down different classifications for a genre when it really doesn't need to be supernatural or even par- we'll just say paranormal ghosts all that supernatural aspects fit under that umbrella in my opinion so yeah. why break it down into these little categories just to be like, well, it's it's supernatural, but it's ghosts or it's supernatural, but it's vampires. Yeah. yeah. OK, I guess. I mean, I, I guess if it's if it's different enough from the norm, hmm. I suppose you could kind of put it in its own category. But at the same time, I think you need to have a substantial amount of films before you can say that a movie is in a whole other category. Right. One thing that that list did not do is there have been horror movies with a bit of romance in them. There is a romantic type of horror film. You've got your roman- uh, you've got your uh, horror comedies. Yeah, and say they didn't list that in their genres. That was the first uh, that was the other one that I was thinking of. It was like comedies. Yeah. That's And I mean, I just found a random list because I kind of wanted to see what different websites might be showing as the genres that they classify. And that's where, I guess, the subgenre idea kind of eludes me a little bit because you could create subgenres for everything if you wanted to. Sure. You know, you could have a killer teddy bear subgenre if you wanted. <laughs> I mean, you know, things like uh, Chucky, mm-hmm. um, let's see, Puppet killer Masters. Dolls. Yeah. yeah, killer dolls. You know, those are all toys that are alive, but that also kind of borders on possession and supernatural as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and I understand dividing some movies because let's be honest, if you say I'm going to rent some monster movies, if I see Godzilla next to Frankenstein, that doesn't make sense to me. That correlation is just yeah, not Two there. Different movies. Those are very different. I mean, as weird as it sounds, <laughs> this is going to sound like a pun almost. The, the size of those films is so different. Right. And um, one's a giant monster and one's a zombie. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you really think about it, you know, I just, I don't know. What, what is your take on this, the whole subgenre thing? I really just, it throws me off whenever I hear it. <laughs> I mean, on some level, I can see where it could be easier to help viewers discern what kind of movie, like going back to the killer toys, or killer dolls, that could, I could see where that could be classified as a subgenre because there are so many killer doll movies of sorts. So you can have all those types listed under that subgenre. Okay. Killer shark movies, plenty of those. So you've got a subgenre there, but when you're being vague about certain things, that's where it gets a little iffy. So what makes you discern that, well, this fits under supernatural, Okay, but why? Well, because there's spooky things going on. Okay, yeah, but what else? And then you you try to put labels on it that don't necessarily fit, like Godzilla being in horror. Just I don't see a Godzilla. I don't I don't view it through that lens. There may be people out there who can see it from a horror aspect, but I'm just not that person. Sci-fi, where it belongs. Um, just not horror there's a there's a different correlation to me so yeah it's it's a slippery slope horror comedies we kind of mentioned that and since you didn't bring comedy into that I, i'm guessing that horror comedy that's a genre or subgenre for comedies not horror which is bizarre that you couldn't cross pollinate that backwards 
and that and see that right there because i thought about that that doesn't make any sense to me because i'll be honest there are some horror comedies that actually have some good jump scares in them that actually might creep some people out yeah you know it does it doesn't take much to creep some people out to scare some people Mm -hmm. so why not classify it under both categories and you know Give it its proper respect, you know. I'm I'm sorry, but no matter what anybody says, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this movie because I love it. Tucker and Dale versus Evil yeah. <laughs> is a horror comedy. And I am going to give it the horror aspect every which way you go. If you watch that with someone who easily scares, they're probably going to be sitting there with their eyes closed through chunks of the movie. Oh yeah. I mean it's it's inevitable. It really is. <laughs> yeah. So I mean you even I take mean, a look at something like um Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. At- really has a very comedic vibe throughout the first two thirds of the film and then takes a hard dark turn at the end to where you're like whoa okay this turned into an entirely different movie but it works yeah and it's just so that one almost kind of seems like there's a it's hard to really pinpoint what it is is it a comedy is it a horror because it teeters a line that you really can't find. I, I mean, me personally, I, it, it's hard for me to classify. I'd probably say more comedy, and then it earns that horror badge that, that yeah. goes along with it. But yeah, I mean, that's one that really blends it together nicely. I think that you I, get the and, best of both worlds. And I think, I think maybe that's why horror comedies kind of looked at in a weird way because there have been some great horror films that have you know been destroyed by too much comedy. Sure, you know, th- there's a lot of people who. And I, I hate to say it because I love all the Nightmare on Elm Streets, but, you know, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. It had a lot of comedy in it. Yep. And a lot of people who were big Fred, you know, big Freddy fans, they did not like that movie very much. Yeah. I liked it for what it was because it was funny. Sure. And, you know, Freddy was still as cynical as ever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, horror comedy is just, there's a reason I guess it wasn't on that list. <laughs> yeah, so. I suppose. And and the whole, like, I understand the whole putting vampires and werewolves and zombies sort of into their own genres now. I, I mm. get that because it seems like each one of those things has grown. Yeah. Over, over you know, over the years, those those uh, types of films have really become their own thing. So it, it doesn't, you know, surprise me that those would be pushed into their own sort of genre. And I'm, but, and I'm also surprised that you didn't mention and again i don't really know if this could be considered a genre per se but considering that we seem to genreize certain things that's not even a word i'm sure i just made up one (laughs) but we've got the trademark for that word everybody that's right genre (laughs) genre genreize but uh classic horror movies you know you see that as kind of a a label they they slap on uh, streaming services now these are classic horror movies so Movies from a certain decade back are considered classics for like Dracula, Frankenstein, and I'm sure even to some degree, Texas Chainsaw, Friday the 13th, Poltergeist, things like that from the 80s. There's there's decades worth of it. So why, if you're labeling that on streaming services, why isn't that part of the genre? You know, and you know how how long does it take until a movie is considered a classic? You know, when when will the first scream become a classic? You know, yeah. Um, Some would argue now. I mean, yeah. it's what did it hit? Twenty five years? Twenty five years, man. That is insane. Yeah, I feel it's... old every time oh, I think about this stuff. A lot of these movies came out <laughs> when I was alive. You know, I I remember going to the movie theater to see Scream. So and I, did, I, I didn't, and I hated that I missed that, but. Yeah, I think every I feel like every subsequent scream past the first one I did get to see in theaters. I w- yeah. I, I want to stand by that. I feel confident about that, but not 100%. Now, there's another genre, you know, films that at the time of their release may not have done very well. Mm-hmm. Cult classics. And I would give that its own genre. Oh you know, yeah. It's it's not exactly it's not exactly one genre of movie, obviously. You know, there's a lot of different genres of movies that don't do very well when they first come out, but then they get that following. Mm-hmm. And I think that that deserves its own genre title as far as that goes. But while we're on this subject, because we could honestly talk about this genre idea of what we think is a genre and what we don't think is a genre for hours, I'm sure. Uh, one thing before I say, I think there should be a genre involving the ocean. I know that's very random, <laughs> but there's a lot of good horror movies that are ocean themed. And it's, I don't know, there's just something about it. Yeah. But while we're on the topic of genres, let's talk about at least two genres that we each 
really like and maybe one or two that we don't like so much you know it's not gonna kill us if we don't see another movie from a certain genre Fair enough. um i'll name one you name one we'll talk about it and then we'll name our next one okay um one genre that i absolutely love uh which is i feel like a i feel like a white girl at starbucks right now saying this but slasher films you know i, I gotta give it to sla- to slasher films uh mm-hmm. that's that's one genre that i absolutely love uh what's one that you say that, that you think you would mm. love well I think I might have to go with uh, creature features. Like uh, when we're talking about stuff like Gremlins, Gremlins, that teeters a line for me that I don't know if I consider, especially the first one, I guess would kind of hit that horror beat. But when I think of creature features that I would consider more horror than comedy, then Gremlins would be something like Critters. Like Critters is like one of my all time favorite creature feature horror films. Like I see that as a horror film yeah. because they go around killing people, slaughtering people, and just like eating people alive like little piranhas, you know, running around. And yeah. that's just that's that's one of those franchises that gets progressively worse, but I like it regardless, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that's why I like slasher films, you know, even if it's not a very good film. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I just like seeing these big hulking bad guys just have at it. You know, there's uh, there's a comfort to it. As weird as yeah. that may sound, there's there's another podcast. I'm promoting another podcast. I'm not getting paid for it, just so you know. But it's something <laughs> you might want to check out. It's it will probably ask a lot more of your time than we are. But there's another podcast to listen to that is about horror called With Gorley and Rust, and they do long-winded talks about horror films and i'm talking like two to three hours just understand you're in for a ride but they talk they've talked about this at length where you have these movies and you say there's just something you like about them, no matter how bad they are and you know they're bad you're watching them you're like yes yeah, it's a terrible movie but you watch it again and again and again because there's something comforting it's cozy to you and they that's what they call it being yeah a cozy movie it just makes you feel good <laughs> and I agree, you know, there's just something about it. You're just like, yeah, I, I need this coziness in my life. Yeah. And it's just, there's something about those slasher films. Like you said, with critters, you know, they might get progressively worse, but there's just, there's something about it that you enjoy uh, yeah. a movie that I absolutely love. And I've, I've loved all the movies that they've made from it. Uh, the hatchet films. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, the last one was called Victor Crowley. Mm-hmm. And the last one, you know, was not the best movie. No, to be I made. Felt, yeah, it felt like it, it went off the rails a little bit compared to the last yeah. ones, but I, I had fun with it. You know, but I mean, what it was, you know, I, I enjoy gore sometimes in horror mm-hmm. films. I do. And Hatchet's just one of those movies you're like, I'm going to watch some blood get splattered today. Mm-hmm. And you just you, you pop it in, you watch it and you're like, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think they took some notes from the Friday the 13th movies, which is hilarious because Kane Hodder plays Victor Crowley, who mm. also played Jason, and they come up with a lot of creative kills. You know, Freddy was always lucky because he was in the dream world. He could kill you any which way he could imagine. Yeah. Jason got creative with other, you know, tools and whatever he had around. You know, the whole sleeping bag kill where you whack the girl up against the tree. Mm. And, you know, Jason X, a lot of people didn't like Jason X, I like it. (laughs) I like it for what it is. And I love when he's in the simulation Mm -hmm. and he's, they got the two campers trying to distract him, the two girls. And it cuts away from that scene for a moment, cuts back and he's beating one of the girls with the other girl. And they're both trapped in the sleeping bags. And every time I see that, I I can't do anything but laugh about it because (laughs) I just think it's, it's cheesy, but it's funny. Yeah. And I I think that's the thing about slasher films that just, they make me happy. Mm-hmm. Just like creature features make you happy. I mean, I don't know what else I could say about them. Yeah. Now, are there are there any other creature features that you absolutely adore? You you mentioned critters, and yeah. I've mentioned a few. Uh, I've mentioned a few slasher films. So, what's another creature feature that you would say you really enjoy? Oh, man, that's that might be uh, Ghoulies. That 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 might be one. Now, I know that one's a little um, questionable. Uh, the first one I could I really don't care for all that much. Two and three are probably my all time favorites. Two because I felt like they really went with the creature feature aspect, like trying to make them gremlins or or, or uh, critters or something like that. Three, this may be an unpopular opinion. I don't care. Three is like one, that is probably one of the more cozy movies, horror films that I just love because it's a creature feature. It's horror, but they've also taken three of the ghoulies and turned them into the three stooges. 
for this horror comedy that is just bonkers and con and, and a college and it shouldn't work, but I love it so much. <laughs> it's it's always the really far out there ideas that that tend to to grab attention. I have to mention a movie real quick that is really far out there because you mentioned this. Uh, I guess this would be a horror comedy. It's also a zombie movie. It's called Fido. Have you ever seen yes, that? Yes. I love that movie. Everybody that I've ever watched that movie with, you are the first person who I've talked to it about who actually enjoyed it. Most of the people that I talk about it with do not enjoy it. It's just so far out there that the zombie has, you know, they have collars for the zombies so that yeah. they don't attack. They're, they're basically slaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and Fido ends up, his collar ends up breaking, but he doesn't kill the little boy because mm -hmm. he actually remembers the little boy. And, you know, they have a friendship and it's like a weird friendship between you know instead of fido the dog it's fido the zombie yeah but it works you know it's it's one of those things where i think with subgenres too especially if you're like putting yourself into a subgenre category that's you know really far out there you've earned you, you know you've earned it to be far out there like that because there are some cheesy movies i mean they have a uh, five five-headed shark attack that's, yeah that's a i guess i would consider that a creature feature of, of I, sorts well, in this shark category, you're kind of oh, yeah. teetering along somewhere. Mut mutant shark. I'm sure that will become its own mm -hmm. category at, at some point in time. Yeah. <laughs> we got to we'll, we'll, we'll get to talking about the bad ones in a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's plenty of them. <laughs> now, creature features are one of your favorites. Monster movies are definitely one of mine. And like I said, those two things sort of correlate. I would say what I mean, though, more toward the monster movie side of things is I really enjoy movies like Tremors, which I consider that a monster movie, but yeah. it, it could be considered a creature feature in its own right, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But one movie that I absolutely love that is another hidden gem, I think, to a lot of people is Pumpkinhead. Oh, yeah. That borders on Supernatural, too. But I'm going to tell you, the whole story involving that is just it's a sad movie mm -hmm. and it shows how much someone would do for someone else that they love that yeah. they care about and that really like that grabbed a hold of me that was one of those comfort movies to yeah. me but with the monster movies you know I, I like the classics i do like you know like frankenstein and creature from the black lagoon and, mm. and all of that um i watch a lot of just cheesy movies on netflix that are monster movies i'll i'll click a random monster movie and i'll be like Let's see what this is. I think there's a movie called Animal. And the only reason that I watched it was because the main girl in it, I used to have the hots for when I was in like high school. I'll be completely honest. I get that. And she's away. She's away for the summer with her friends. And, you know, there's bathing suits on and things like that. And I'm a guy. I'm, I'm going to watch horror movies for the chicks in bikinis and mm -hmm. everything, too. And it actually turned out to be a decent movie. The monster was actually really decently designed. Hmm. And I think that is the thing about monster movies. I love seeing the effects that they come up with for monster movies, especially yeah. when they're practical. So I, I, I would definitely say monster movies would be my my second favorite category. We might get into third categories, but go okay. ahead and tell me what 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 your second one would be. Hmm. I was thinking about this and I think I might have to go because it's it has to be very precise like a very specific type of movie, but something psychological, psychological yeah. horror. And if it's done right, and I think that's why I like it so much, because if it's done right, it pays off in spades so well. And some that I'm, I'm trying to think of might not fall into that category, but they're, they're play on it. Like one more recent that just kind of came to mind for a lot of reasons was The Invisible Man, the remake that was recently done, who... Who directed that? Uh, I feel I, like it I was would, one of the guys from Saw or something. I think it's not James Wan, but the other guy. Uh, Give me a second. I, I'm, I'm going to look it up right now. Okay, while we're Google on that. Here. So while I'm sitting there thinking about it, even the way they marketed the movie. Now, it's spoilers for this two-year-old movie. So hopefully you've seen it. If you haven't, it should be available anywhere you want to watch it. But they sell the entire movie based on this idea that she, that the main character is just imagining an invisible man that doesn't yeah. that's not there and throughout the entire uh, up to a certain point in the movie you're right there with her you're going Shh, i don't know what to believe you know i don't know if she's crazy or and i know we're probably not supposed to say crazy i don't mean like that but you know what i mean um you don't know if she's imagining this or if there is an invisible man you don't know 
And and you can't beat that. It's such a good trope. I don't want to call it a trope. It's such a, a good way to sell the horror. Yeah. Because you are as confused as she is. And you're just, you want answers. <laughs> and when you finally get it, you're like, ah, you know, it's like you're, you're justified in believing everything that she did. Like, I'm not crazy. There is somebody, you know. I will say too, before I tell you who the director is, I will say this too. One thing about that film that I really enjoyed, the way that they did the um, camera angles and Mm -hmm. everything in that, they left everything real wide. They left it open so that you didn't know where he would be. You were just as lost as she would. It really gives this like foreboding sense that something's going to happen. And that keeps your adrenaline going. That just keeps you on your toes like, what is happening here? Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot for a film to do that, especially especially, especially when today, you know, oh, I yeah. feel like that there are so many horror movies like that. That is a remake of something classic from the universal days. We've seen how they botched the mummy. And if you like the mummy, I, I'm talking about Tom Cruise's mummy. I'm not talking about Brendan Fraser's, which I'll give it props. I mean, I wouldn't consider it horror. I'd consider that action adventure with a spice of horror. You yeah. Know? Yeah, it doesn't really hit the horror beats for me. They, they they knew they couldn't hit the original, right? So they they did their own thing, and I think they they did the right thing with that. But taking a look at what's the director? You've got his name. <laughs> his name is Lee. Is it Juanel? Juanel. So yeah, so one of the guys yep. that did Saw. Okay, so he co-creator of Saw with James Wan. Anyway, Lee Juanel, he did that. What he did with the Invisible Man, prime example of what you can do with a little ingenuity you don't have to do big spectacle think of an idea that i mean if if universal wants to recreate their monsters from way back when use that as an example what did he do he took a concept and flipped it on its head to create a horror movie unlike the original but in the vein of the original and it works so perfectly by paying homage and being its own thing and i just i thought it was remarkable So that psychological horror, if done correctly, can just pay off so well. And it 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 makes you think the entire time. You're on the edge of your seat with the character. And that's what's beautiful about it, if done correctly. Now I will mention too, uh, speaking of psychological horror films and and things like that, uh, I really enjoyed it's an older movie, uh, The Uninvited. I don't know if you've seen that movie or not know of it that movie had a interesting twist at the at the end of it um it follows follows a girl whose uh, dad is married to this much younger woman he's an author wealthy and she starts having these hallucinations she starts thinking that her stepmom is going to kill her that all these things are happening and it turns into one of those she's thinking that things are there that aren't really there Mm -hmm. And it causes her to do some terrible things. If if you've never seen it, check it out. I think you might enjoy it. I know I've heard of it. I don't think I've seen it though. And to be, honest, familiar. T- to be honest, I watched that movie for the same reason that I watched the other movie I was telling you about. There was a girl in it that I thought was kind of cute. And I was like, I'm going to give this movie a watch. Hey, wrong <laughs> so, <with that. laughs> now, there is also a category that I think could be considered its own subgenre. It's horror slash thriller. Okay. And I do think that a lot of really good horror films have that thriller aspect to them. Mm -hmm. There's a movie that I really enjoyed, uh, Hide and Seek. I know of it. It's got Robert De Niro in it Mm -hmm. and Dakota Fanning before she got big and went a little loopy. (laughs) But uh, he's got like a split personality in it. Mm Mm-hmm. And his split personality in it is her imaginary friend, and he doesn't want to go away. And it's more of a thriller, but it's actually a decent movie. Hmm. And that, you know, I would consider the horror thriller subgenre to be another one of those just really good subgenres. Yeah. And I guess the the other subgenre that I would say that I honestly really enjoy, and I'm sure you really enjoy it too, is horror comedy. Sure. We have to just say that, you know. Oh yeah. Who doesn't who doesn't love some, you know, crazy stuff happening that'll make you laugh in a horror movie? You know, that doesn't happen too much. <laughs> Best horror comedy that took me by surprise over the last year. I feel like it was over the last year that I saw it was Psycho Gore Man. That was the most bonkers horror comedy I have ever seen in my life. And it was a joy. I watched it several times since uh, my first viewing. It's on Shudder if you've got Shudder. 
check that out. It is just, so, <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what to say about it other than just, just buckle up because you're in for a ride. If you like just pure insanity, that's what you're going to get. And it's in all the best ways. It's not like they just said, Hey, let's just do whatever. They know what they're doing in all the right ways. So much so that if you don't know what the story is, have you ever seen it? I have not seen it yet. I put it on my watch list, but I haven't watched it yet. You have to watch it. Okay. So the story in a nutshell, just to kind of give you a, a rundown. There's a an alien that has been buried under earth. He was locked away because he was a war criminal or whatever. I can't remember. I say I can't remember. I'm just trying to keep it vague. He's a terrible alien. <laughs> okay. So this alien council locked him away, put him on earth, buried him in a backyard. Uh, he's been there for like a long time. These kids dig him up. How they dig him up. That's an entirely different thing altogether because I don't want to spoil that. Uh, but they dig him up, he gets loose. And then when they find him, they have the item that was keeping him locked away, which controls him. And then they decide, hey, we got this guy on the rope. So we can do, we have to make him do whatever we want. And he's like a freaking madman, you know? <laughs> so, but he can't not do what they tell him to. And it's just, it's it's pure insanity. So much so that the father, this is where I was going to go with it. At one point, you, you expect the parents in these movies to kind of be, you know, the moral centers and be like, kids, what well, you've got to do. This father has zero fucks to give about anything. Because when they find this hole in the backyard, it's like, well, we got to fix this. The, mo the mother's just like, I'm, what are we going to do with this hole in the backyard? And he's like, well, I guess we've got to fill it up. And she hands him a, a shovel and he's like, oh, oh my ankle, I've got to oh, gotta go sit down. I was like, what a day. <laughs> but that's the, that's the kind of person he is. So like I said, it's, it's just pure insanity, but all in the best ways. Buckle up for the ride. It's just, I love it so much. Highly recommend and Psycho Gore, man. Horror comedy I, with plenty of gore to go along with it. So it lives up to its name. I'm definitely going to have to put that on my list of things to watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, there is a movie, uh, the, the guys that did um, Tucker and Dale versus yeah. Evil. The one guy that plays, is Tucker the one with the beard? I can never remember. I know that sounds awful. Uh, um, I don't know. I can't. I, I can't. I swear. can't remember. But, but but it's him. It's called Cottage Country. This guy and his girlfriend go on a killing spree because they don't want people to find out about something. It's it's the most meaningless little thing in the world. Some kind of little accident happens and they get tired of their neighbors or something and they just they go on a killing spree. And the, <laughs> the husband the husband's like, "Honey, we got we got to stop this." And she's like, "Just one more, hun. One more, and it'll all be okay." <laughs> It kind of has like a bummer ending. I'll give it that. Like okay. the ending kind of bums you out, but the whole movie other than that is just is just great. You know, I, I think we're going to have to do a whole show just on horror comedies. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I've thing. got a, like, a quite a few. Yeah. And, you I know, mean, I can forgive a bummer ending if the movie itself was a good ride, because yeah. I've I, you know, I've had a few movies like that. One that's not a horror film. I guess you might classify it if you want to break it down, depending on how you want to classify horror, but I wouldn't call it a horror film. Requiem for a Dream has the most downer ending I have ever seen in a movie. It will take you down. It will make you depressed. But the ride is fantastic. So I'll give it that, you know, and that's why I've watched it several times. I know the downer ending's coming. That ride is fantastic, and I'll take it every time, knowing where I'm going. And the Fly. One of my all-time favorite horror films. If we're going to go horror films, downer ending. But The Ride <laughs> is phenomenal. I, I completely understand that one. I mean, we see these movies, and I hate to talk about a remake. I wanted to like the Friday the 13th remake. There were things about it that I liked. Yeah. And spoiler alert to anybody that, you know, hasn't seen it. It's been out since 2009, I think. The biggest thing to me was when they were escaping Jason's lair. Mm -hmm. and um jared padalaki he was he was he was getting out he had gotten his sister out the girl who he had grown attached to in the movie she yeah. goes to come out and bam he gets her to this day when i watch that scene i know it's not the ending of the movie but to this day when i watch that scene it still just annoys me to no end i liked parts of the movie i'm not gonna lie yeah but overall i was already on the fence with it hmm. but that part of the end sealed it for me yeah and you know like you were saying, if the ride to the end is fantastic and the end is, you know, a downer, yeah, it was still worth it. 
you know, I think I think it makes you grow fonder of those type of movies. Hmm. There's a closeness with it. Yeah. It's not the ending you wanted, but it's weirdly like the ending that you need for sure for it to work. Like there was while we're kind of on this subject, there was uh, another one that I've watched here recently. And I, you know, I feel like this movie got I guess it could be classified a horror film uh in some aspects i feel like maybe psychological would be it teeters on a few different genres but i feel like the way it was marketed marketed it wrong i mean it was enough to get me and you know excited about it to want to see it but then upon watching it i was like this is not the movie i thought i was going to see and that was that movie lamb from a24 i don't feel like it's a horror movie per se and it has one of those endings that i did not expect I should have expected in some aspect, like I wasn't thinking about it. And I love when I can do that. I know some people can can figure out an ending the moment they watch it. Like, I think the very first time I watched The Sixth Sense with my brother or something like that, as soon as the Bruce Willis got shot, he's like, oh, he's dead. And I was like, well, goddamn, dude, we've still got two hours of this movie, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I just, I like not knowing, you know, I like being blank because yeah, see, when, I'm, when the, the, you know, the reveal happens, I'm like, oh my God, you know, I love not knowing. I love being dense about it. Now, see, I'm, I'm the opposite with some movies. There's some movies I kind of want to go in and be, maybe not know the ending, but kind of be mentally prepared for certain things. Sure. A, a lot of the time when I find something out though about a movie, it's because I had it spoiled for me. Not yeah. a horror movie. But in No Way Home, I found out that Aunt May got killed before. Uh, uh, yeah. So did I. So did I, I. You know, right before, you know, I guess the thing that makes up for it was uh, Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. Let's be mm. honest. He he stole that film. Yeah. And spoilers. <laughs> we go talking about I mean, hey, you're again. listening to a horror <laughs> podcast. This is not comic book podcast. That's right. Comic you, book you want movie to listen to podcast. You want to listen to comic book movie podcast? Give us a few weeks. We'll come up with another show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, Lamb just had one of those. It was, I watched it twice. My wife was um, like, when I showed her the trailer, she's like, I'm going to hate this movie because she had this preconceived notion about what was going to happen in the movie. So I had to pre watch it. And then when I got to the end, I had to convince her. I was like, what you think is going to happen is not going to happen. So you're, it's okay. Uh, you can watch it. But I guarantee you're not going to see what's happening or going to happen at the end. And sure enough, when it all comes down, she's like, what? <laughs> just like I did, because I was just caught off guard. I was like, what did I miss? I blinked and something just happened. And it's also one of those endings that I'm sure could probably piss people off where you're just kind of left unsatisfied. But I also feel like it's one of those endings that you have to think about for a minute. And when you really look at the bigger picture... It was like, yeah, this is how it needed to end because of you have to think about everything that's happened up to this point that led you here. And is this the appropriate ending? Yes, it is. So for me, it, it was an ending that caught me off guard and I wasn't sure how I felt about it. Second viewing, I was like, yes, this is exactly the way this ending had to go. So I prove it. I like the movie. I, I went out and I mean, I actually bought it on digital because I loved it so much. I saw it on sale and I was like, I got to have this movie. So it's one I'd recommend. You said it's called Lamb? Lamb. And it's a check it out. Swedish horror film. I, I feel like the director had done something prior to this, but I could not tell you what it was right offhand. But if you're worried about subtitles, there are subtitles, but it's not a very dialogue heavy movie. So you're not going to be sitting there reading the entire time going, oh my God, I can't keep up with everything. It's very light on dialogue. So if you're worried about that, don't. Don't worry about it. Just go in for the ride for that one, too, because I feel like it's it's definitely unique. You know, it, it, it stands apart. And, you know, you just uh, actually brought up another type of subgenre, foreign horror films. Mm. Yeah. Which, to be honest, I a lot of the time, I think that's where it's at. Uh, I might have to disagree to a point, to a point. Yeah. And it might be, it might, I mean, this might be where we're teetering into subgenres we dislike. This may sound like sacrilege to some, but Lucio Fulci is, I, I cannot stand his, his films. I feel like they are boring. Uh, these Italian zombie films or whatever you want to call them. They're just, mm -hmm. oh my God, every one of them I've watched, I feel like they're a slog. They just, they drag on so much. The pacing is so slow. Even kills take forever 
forever. Yeah. And I, I don't have the, I don't know why I don't have the patience for it, but I, I feel like they're just paced. They're not, they're not even that long, which is the weird part about it. It's like, how do you have a 90 minute <laughs> horror film and everything seems to take forever? You yeah. know, it's like you had a 40 page script that you had to stretch out to 90 minutes. And I just, oh man, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> and and the, the worst part about it is too, uh, zombie, I, I know it's different or labeled something different in Italy or overseas. It might be in UK altogether because I know the Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead was zombie two over there. Maybe. I believe so. Yeah. So zombie was their zombie. And then Dawn of the Dead became zombie two over there, but their zombie. Like I love the case for that or the, the cover art, the zombie, the design makeup and everything. I, like I yeah. love that. Like the very first time I saw it in a, in a uh, video store, which is an ancient relic, by the way, I just I, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. You know, there's just something grotesque, but fascinating about, the, you know, it's just that's the kind of horror I love when it's mm-hmm. it, it's disgusting, but fascinating. Like, you, you know, it's gross, but you can't take your eyes off of it. You're like, oh, I just want to study it. You know, it's weird, but I love it. And that's one of those designs that I just love so much, but I, I hate that movie. <laughs> I get it. I mean, they can't all be winners. I know yeah. that. As weird as it sounds, most of the foreign horror films that I've seen have been, at least by my standards, you know, everybody has a different eye for films. Hmm. But the movies that I've seen, I've I've really enjoyed. There's a French film. I, th- I think it translates over here to Inside. Mm -hmm. Uh, that movie is definitely one of those movies that you don't see the twist coming at the end of it. There's, I'll kind of go into detail. I'll describe the end of it, but I won't get into too much detail. A woman basically gets her baby stolen from her and she's left to bleed out in her home because another woman takes a pair of scissors and cuts the baby out of her. Jesus. Yeah. And when you find out what the reason is, you just sit there in shock. Mm -hmm. I everything that's led up to that point. Another movie that I really enjoy, they redid it over here. It's called Martyrs. I believe Martyrs was a French film as well. And it's a revenge movie. It's about a woman who escaped from this really terrible place where they they torture people. They they make people martyrs. They torture mm-hmm. them. They do terrible things to them. She escapes and she goes back for revenge. And that, I mean, right, there's another subgenre, revenge yeah. horror films. But those are two foreign films that I absolutely love. Well, uh, another one that I really love is called they wait it's mm-hmm. a korean film okay. it's um it's a ghost story you have to kind of understand the customs over there a little bit to really appreciate the film mm. they explain it a little bit but it's about a vengeful spirit who threatens to kill this woman's son if this woman doesn't avenge her death yeah. and it's it's cheesy it's mm. maybe not the scariest movie you'll ever see but yeah. it is a decent movie so well, i will I- give foreign films i will give foreign films credit there i guess i've just been lucky unlike you and i haven't but, seen anything that's really dragged on <laughs> right but i mean i was really touching on uh, italian horror but i mean you brought up korean horror i mean mm-hmm. train to busan is probably one of the best foreign horror films i'd seen in a long time that is a beautiful zombie film in fact so much so that i after the walking dead and world war z and all that stuff happened like the zombie craze had just hit uh, like this insane bar I got burnt out on zombies. Train to Busan brought me back. I was like, oh my God, I love this movie. The hell with the zombie. I mean, everything about it was just so perfect. Yes, yes. So, I oh, I stumbled upon that movie on mm-hmm. Amazon Prime. I was, I was sitting at home one day and I was like, this movie looks pretty good. I'll give it a watch. Why not? There was nothing else on. Yeah. And I remember just sitting on the edge of the couch, just like, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? It just, it kept my attention so yeah. well and i will agree with you wholeheartedly that movie is just magnifique mm-hmm. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. amazing so yeah there's there's another great uh or at least there's an example of a great foreign horror film so i'm not shitting on the entire <laughs> subgenre <laughs> i just mean hey, it's it, okay italian horror lucio fulci there may be other italian horror filmmakers that can do it better dario argento i know is is uh one that has done a lot of great work i couldn't tell you one of his movies off the top of my head um that i've seen i know suspiria i think is one of his uh, but i've never i've never taken the time to watch it uh, that is a trippy movie that's what i've heard i will tell you i will tell you that right now it is trippy as all get out but i don't know i just using using train to busan as an example I, I have nothing wrong with uh foreign horror films just give me a good one you know i'll yeah. take it just give me a good one i think the host is another one 
that I've seen, and it might be directed by someone. I feel like I know who it was, but it was, it was kind of like a, a creature feature giant monster movie film. I, I feel like it was the same guy, but I could, I think my memory is getting me all mixed up, but the host was, was one that was about a giant monster. And that was a surprise for a, for a horror film. I don't know if I've seen the host. I've seen the previews for it. I think I've watched the trailer for it, hmm. but I have not seen, I've heard good things about it. It looks like the director's name, I'm probably going to really butcher this, Bong Joo-ho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he the same guy that did Train to Busan? Because I just have, I don't know why I want to piece them together like that. And I don't want to, if I'm, if I'm getting it wrong, but I, he's, he's a very prominent uh, Korean filmmaker. No, it's Sang Ho Young. That's, there we go. All right. So that's who did Train to Busan. So my apologies. I didn't mean to equate, but the one you mentioned from, the host was say it again. <laughs> let, let, um, let me Google it. We, we are professionals. I promise you Bong Joon Ho. Yeah. Now he's done a lot of great work and I feel like I've seen more of his movies than just that, but that what name it does is, sound familiar. I don't know. Um, so would you, would you consider that one of the genres that you aren't particularly a fan of then for him? I wouldn't horror. say that I dislike it. I guess I just haven't discovered enough in the, genre that i i really enjoy now as far as bon jun ho goes i have looking back on his filmography i've seen several of his films i've seen snow piercer i've seen uh parasite so the host i mean if you want to watch that he's got two academy awards right up under his belt or at least solid movies that have been nominated yeah parasite won best picture so look there yeah. so you know he's talented so go watch the host now that's what i'm trying to tell you i'm gonna have to check it out myself it's been a while since I've watched it, but I remember enjoying it. Yeah. So I, I would recommend it. I don't know why I've not seen it yet because I've, it's like I've always gone to it and I've always either like watched the trailer or I've seen something involving it. Hmm. I just never click the play button. Well, it's, it's <laughs> the same I don't with, know why. it's the same with Train to Busan. I mean, when that came out, I started hearing the word of mouth was starting to go around and saying, check this movie out, check this movie out. And I would always just kind of be like, eh zombies you know and that's where my head was i was like well maybe they they still like zombies maybe they maybe it's just a might be a good zombie film but it's still zombies and i was just like eh. and that's what kind of kept me from going and then one day like you i just said all right i'll see what the big deal is hit play and i was in bed at the time i was like i'll probably pass out halfway through whatever and as soon as the movie got going i was hooked like i was I watched it from to until the end, and I was like, "I've got to show everybody this movie now." <laughs> <laughs> now, now, let me ask you this: This is a completely random question, but it has to do with zombies. Do you prefer running zombies or walking zombies, or do you think they should rot and slow down as they rot? I feel that the rotting uh, and then slowing down does kind of make sense a little bit, but in all honesty, I kind of find the idea of slow zombies more terrifying because you feel like you can outrun them. You feel like you can just move away from it. It's like, ah, they're not a threat. And then you underestimate what they're capable of, or you underestimate that you're able to get away from them. And then it's like the swarm comes in. Like you're not seeing this other one behind you or this other one coming up from this end. And then it's this overwhelming horde that you just didn't anticipate and then you get cut off guard. And I feel like that's more terrifying, not knowing that you're trapped until you're trapped. You know what I mean? Versus that's you solid. just see a whole bunch of them coming at you and it's like, oh shit, you know, they're going to catch me. Of course, they're going to catch you. They're running at like a hundred miles an hour, but something coming at you at a slow pace, slowly overwhelming you, you think you're going to be okay. You're like, hey, yeah, we can get out of this. It's fine. It's fine. And then next thing you know, you're just like, oh shit. We're, we're, you know, we're outnumbered and we didn't realize it. So to me, that's, that's more terrifying. You know, there's a movie that uh, really sells that it's called, uh, it stains the sands red it's about a I've woman. Yeah, it's about a woman. She's out in the middle of the desert during the zombie apocalypse. And there's one zombie and it's coming after her. Hmm. And she has to think of how she can, you know, sleep at night and everything else with this thing, you know, coming after her. It, it doesn't run or anything. It just walks after her, but it really like puts it into perspective of, you know, zombies don't sleep. They don't stop moving. If mm -hmm. you get tired and everything, they're still going to keep coming at you. And I know there's a scene in it too, where she almost gets rescued by these two guys, but they have ill intentions. 
Ah. And she opens the door. And when she opens the door, the zombie actually gets a hold of one of the guys. So he actually kind of helps her out hmm. inadvertently. But that's another one of those movies that if you ever get the chance to, to check it out, it kind of does the zombie thing at a different angle. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's my thing with, with the subgenres and everything. You know, things become so popular that they just they just overdo it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, like like I had said in one of um in one of the conversations we had on the first episode, vampires for me. You know, they were doing so many vampire movies, and I finally just I got tired of it. And mm. then out of nowhere, the show The Strain comes into my life, and I'm like, I'm gonna give this show a try. I'm gonna see if it's any good. And that 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 show threw me for a loop. You know, even even the story of the there's an old man in it. Hmm. He's like ninety something years old, but he steals blood from the vampires and he purifies it and he uses it to keep himself able to fight and even his story you find out that he was uh, a prisoner of war in an in a nazi you know a nazi camp and everything and he was a carpenter and the the lead vampire he was actually building his coffin hmm. in it and just all this detail in the story is just insane a lot of people don't like it though because the guy that plays the old man who's one of the main characters, the best way I can describe him, he plays the um, janitor, Argus Filch, I think is his name, in Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, okay, yeah. He's, he's also in uh, Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. he, he did the Red Wedding. He yes. gave the command to kill everybody. So a lot of people don't like him. Sure. <laughs> and in, in the show, he's a hard ass, but you actually kind of like him in the show. When I think of him, I think of Harry Potter. And as weird as it sounds, I think of... Um, doctor who because he did play the doctor at one point okay. yeah or I, I think he did like a limited run as the mm -hmm. doctor but now i think about him as the old man and that's what they referred to him as in the book anyways i refer to him as the old man from the strain and if, if you get the chance to check that out it's on uh hulu i believe yeah okay you might like it and if you if you do watch it and you do like it please let me know because it's it's something that i would love to talk about with somebody else who would watch it <laughs> so, it was it was definitely one of those that was on my radar when it came on, but it, for some reason I passed on it and I can't remember why it was just one of those. Well, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And then it just got away from me and I was like, all right, well maybe some other time. So and I I'll, just need to circle back around. Yeah. And I'll be honest. It, it does have a slow build hmm. at the beginning. So, you, you know, if you can make it through the first few episodes, it gets better. It really picks up, but there is a slow build at the beginning. I will admit that all day. Um, you kind of see the first transformations of the vampires at a slow pace, and then it kind of builds its way up into this huge war. Because the vampire basically learned from humans about creating concentration camps. And this vampire wants to, wants to make sure a nuclear bomb goes off to basically block out the sun, put us into like a nuclear winter put humans into concentration camps so that vampires have blood and that so that they can have the world for themselves hmm. definitely a twisted idea yeah but it's it's even like it's so unique because they talk about all the you know gimmicky vampire things like oh a vampire can't see its reflection the old man says that's not the truth he said they can see the reflections they just can't if they look at the reflection in a silver mirror the silver will vibrate at such an intensity that you'll know like old like he looks at all the old original superstitions yeah. and then you have these scientists who are looking at it from this is a virus it's an ancient virus but it's a virus let's treat it like a virus and they try to think of ways to fix you know everything that's wrong with the infected one right. of the coolest scenes in the whole thing, this guy's working in the morgue, and there's all these dead people in the morgue that are actually vampires. And he's doing something, and he's not paying attention, and he looks up and around him, and all these dead people are just standing around him. And the one that he had just cut the stomach open in stands up, and everything just kind of falls out on the floor, and the guy's like, uh... And they just all attack him. But that's another one of those, uh, those series that kind of gave me a reason to go back to vampires and you know i'm i know that there's some new werewolf movies coming out mm -hmm. there's a there's a more recent one where i can't think of the name of it off the top of my head all i know is that it's about a hunter who is tracking down a werewolf and i've kind of looked at some of the details of it it looks like it might be pretty good okay <clears throat> but I'm, I'm waiting for a good werewolf movie the, the last as bad as this sounds and i liked the underworld movies and everything but the last werewolf movie that i guess it's just a movie that had a werewolf in it where I actually really liked what the werewolf looked like and everything was Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman. Nothing wrong with that. 
that had one of the best looking werewolves I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> I can understand that, yeah. Like uh, I, I actually like the Wolfman with um uh, uh cripes. What's his name? Anthony Hopkins and I did like that movie too, and I can't think of the guy's name either. Uh, Benicio del Toro. God, that's it. That's it. it. In fact, he's I actually thought like this was one of those after the fact things like I hadn't thought about it up until he was in the movie. Mm -hmm. And then I was watching the movie and I was like, he has an uncanny resemblance to Lon Chaney Jr. If you yes. really look at them, I was like, holy shit, it's weird. But, you know, it's there. And, you know, I, I had almost forgotten about that movie because yeah. it's been so long since I've seen it. And if I remember right, you know, he sees it as a curse and mm -hmm. his father, you know, Anthony Hopkins, he sees it as a gift. Right. And to see those two go up against each other. Yeah. Is just amazing. You know, Anthony Hopkins was in another movie. It's an old movie and I can't think of the name of it, but it would be like an, an animal type of horror movie. I guess you could say him and Alec Baldwin are in it and they're in Alaska and they're being stalked by a bear. Yes. I know. Um, and Alec Baldwin's in love with uh, Anthony Hopkins wife in it because he's married movie? to like a young woman. Yeah. I, can't I know. I know. I know the movie you're talking about, but I can't remember the name of it. And it's a fantastic movie. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look it up right now. Yeah, go ahead. Speaking of uh, how we did that, did you see how we did that? You talked about Van Helsing, and then I brought up Anthony Hopkins. He played Van Helsing. We just circled that shit back around. Look okay. at that. We're making progress. <laughs> yeah, he played that in uh, Dracula, just to kind of make sure we're, we're hitting all the right beats. Yep. Just saying. But so let's see here. It is called The Edge. The Edge. I was sitting there thinking the gray, and then I was like, no, that's that uh, Liam Neeson movie where he was fighting a bear or out in the wilderness somewhere. He, he fights the wolves at the end. The wolves. Of it. That's the, right. The wolves, the wolf, their plane crashes down or whatever, and the wolves take out most of them. The movie cuts off with him fighting the wolf. He's got like broken bottles and stuff in between his fingers, and he's going to go go up against this wolf all by himself. I mean, <laughs> if anyone could take on a wolf, it's Liam Neeson. Come on. Yeah. Why not? That's that's true. That would definitely be him. <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't a match for Darth Maul, but we'll forgive that one. Hmm. <laughs> so let's talk about some some subgenres we can do without, because okay. I'm sure we both have at least one or two that you know maybe we have a few movies we like, but I you know, know for the most part, I know exactly which one I could do without, and I hate to say it. I hate to say it because I love and hate shark movie i love them because jaws is a fantastic movie i will even posit the jaws 2 is a fantastic shark movie i don't give a damn what anyone says i think it's underrated uh three and four can do without but there are so few good shark movies but there are so many bad ones you know what i mean oh yeah yep so Sharknado and <laughs> <laughs> Not even just Sharknado. I mean, I know that's always the one that we always go to, but so many that even try to be serious. I watched one. I think it was just called Great White. I watched it on Shudder. It was boring. Just one of those movies that you sit there and you shout at your screen and say, what are you doing? God, know. just stop. Let me know what you think of the movie Ghost Shark, because that's a movie too. Oh my God. There was a, I saw, I saw a trailer for one the other day, like a, a it, same same situation like a bunch of kids i can't remember what the hell the name of it this is it was one of those that i'm watching and it was like i want to watch it that's the worst part about it too is i see these movies like 47 meters down and stuff like that and i, I want to watch them because i love the genre but i hate it so much because every fucking time it's a bad movie and uh, i keep hoping that i'm gonna find that one and it's gonna be so good and i'm like thank you thank you for making such a great shark movie and just to, just about every time. I mean, there's so few that you can sit there and watch and say shark movie, fantastic. You know, so I get that. I, I, mean, I, I hate to say that I hate it, but I do because there's just so many bad ones. Yeah, I mean, I and I get that. I mean, I've seen seen. Gosh, let me think here. Two headed mutant shark. There's a three headed mutant shark. There's a five headed mutant shark movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, avalanche sharks, sand sharks, yeah. space sharks, house shark. What what is that? It's a t toilet and the fin, and I'm like, what are you doing? And it turns into a parody of itself, and again, that's where I start to hate it because they're not taking it seriously anymore. So you either have people taking it too silly or trying to be serious, and they just don't get it. You know, like they're trying to do something serious, and well, we're, we're going to make a real serious shark movie, but your movie is boring. Yeah. You're not doing anything to make me 
give a damn. You're just boring me to death. And okay, I, I'll rant all day about shark movies. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not too far off with the genre I could do without. There's not really a whole lot of really animal horror movies that I yeah. particularly have cared for the last few years. Snakes in particularly and alligators and crocodiles. Yeah, I could like, do Lake Placid. The, the first Lake Placid is wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, you also get Betty White cussing in it, which is she's got the best line ever where she's like, if I if I had a dick, this is where I tell you to suck it. Like, that's <laughs> the best line ever, especially from Betty White. Right, right. You know, the, the last decent movie that I saw about a crocodile was a movie called Crawl. I thought Crawl was halfway decent. Love that movie. That was one of those that I went to the theater having mm -hmm. low expectations, walked out going, I love this movie. I yeah. love it. And, you know, I think the thing that made me enjoy it so much was the realism to it. Yeah. You know, that could really happen. I mean, there were pictures, you know, during one of the last hurricanes when places flooded, there was, you know, people taking pictures of sharks and stuff swimming down, you know, where Main Street was. Yeah. But it's, 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 the thing about that is just crazy. But one thing that I can definitely do without snake movies, you know, I like the I like the original Anaconda. Mm hmm. I love that movie. And there's been a few snake movies that I have liked, but it seems like most of the snake movies that I've seen here recently, they're not, you know, high budget films or anything like that. So the snakes just, they look terrible. You know, they're, they're cheap CGI and everything else. And again, people are trying to act serious in these movies, but I can't, you know, I, I would rather watch Thanksgiving, th Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving <laughs> and watch the giant, you know, puppet turkey that cusses. Than some of these snake movies that I've been seeing, you know, so I guess that would be one of the, you know, the subgenres that I could maybe do without a another subgenre that I really, if it's done right, I enjoy it. If it's not done right, it's just a waste of time. And that's body horror, you know? Yeah. See, that that's I, where I uh, kind of went with the fly. That's one of those body horror films that I truly love but I'm with you. That's one of those that I don't necessarily enjoy. So, yeah. You know, Evil Dead would be the, the one that I would kind of go to. They do the whole body horror in a decent way. Even the remake, which I, I got to admit, I'm a little bummed that they never did a sequel to the remake. They just finished. Because I liked the remake. They just finished rapping. Now, is that, is, is that going to be a sequel to that movie? I don't know if it'll be a direct sequel per se. But uh, I know the same people are involved, Necronomicon, a uh, different location. I know they're, yeah, they're moving. I think they're they're doing like a very large scale this time, I think. Mm -hmm. Sounds like they're going to do like the Necronomicon gets loose in a huge city or something like that. From what I hear, L.A. Yeah. Yeah. Which fun little fact, speaking of uh, of movies and things, they've been talking about, uh, you know, they, they want to make another Gremlin movie. And we keep coming back to Gremlins, which is hilarious, mm. but they want to make another Gremlins movie. And they've they've been talking about it would be epic if they did a movie where, uh, you know, Stripe, you know, come back again <laughs> yeah. and jumped in like a like a big lake or something. And just the Gremlins take over a whole big city. And I could see that. I mean, I, I would I would go watch it. Not going to yeah. lie. I, I would probably go watch it. I could watch Gizmo, you know, fight off all the evil Gremlins until the end of time probably yeah i mean i would be I, I want another i want another gremlins film i don't know if i want to see a continuation from where we left off now yeah because it's been so long uh, like where do you go from there you know because is, is gizmo still alive after all this time how long does a mogwai live yeah it raises a lot of questions and then we, we got that animated series that i guess is gonna answer questions which yeah the, whenever the, the hell uh, that comes thing. out because yeah. they've been talking about that for like when HBO Max launched, it was like, yeah, we're going to have a Gremlin series. Like, okay, when? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think the last, the last news I saw for that was two years ago. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand why you've announced this thing. And yet when is it coming out? I think we've barely seen any kind of footage from it. Maybe like a sliver of a clip. And yeah. that was just, and they, they have Gizmo. some cover art, I think. Yeah, yeah. They have some cover art too. And I, I think that's about it. Speaking of HBO Max real quick, I know we're, kind of jumping all over the place here but they are actually talking about doing a pennywise series on hbo max and i actually think that might be interesting yeah especially if they're looking at different time periods because they'd have to be very specific because if this is going to be playing off of the movies that just came out like if that's canon because i have heard bill skarsgård is coming back correct i believe I'm, so yeah i'm almost positive i heard that so 
you'd have to go 27 years back from whatever point in the 80s they did because he has that cycle so that would have to be the time period somewhere in the 60s i guess yeah which would honestly as crazy as it sounds that would honestly put it at the same time period that the events of the it series that tim curry was in took place it took place That's around true. that time period it's right oh, so okay. yeah. you know but the thing is is there were a lot of other children that pennywise claimed before the losers club took him down so they could get into that story a little bit yeah as well be fun, yeah. which speaking of speaking of uh pennywise and, and stephen king and all that uh, i know they're going to be remaking christine which I don't know how I feel about that. Mm. They've been talking about remaking Cujo. Don't know how I feel about that either. And speaking of subgenres, can we just do this already and just say that Stephen King is his own subgenre? I would agree. <laughs> they have they have Lovecraftian horror. Mm. I mean, why not have Stephen King as its own genre? And you know that that's actually the movies that uh, with Gorley and Rust have been covering here over the past couple of weeks since I brought them up earlier. They've been talking. They've been doing like a countdown of just they picked five Stephen King movies each and they've just been randomly selecting which one they're going to talk about out of their list uh and it's funny because as you mentioned how you feel about Stephen King horror movies I know this could be an entirely different podcast so I'll make it quick um it really depends on who the director is or who was handling it because some are so good and then others are just a downright disappointment it's not the it's not Stephen King's stuff it's who's handling the material some get it, some don't. Andy Machete got it. And I could say that just, he got it. He got it. He got it and he made it work. <laughs> and despite how you may feel about chapter two, I know, it, I think that's just inherent of the story. Like we're, I think we're more fascinated with the kids as kids versus being adults. And yeah. I don't feel like that's a fault of anybody. I think that's just how we all feel. The, the adult story is just not as compelling as the kid's story. So, no, I mean, the, the kid's part is more of an underdog story. Yeah. So it, it, it tells a different story, but it's still good, you know, so I'm, I'm not knocking chapter two at all. I think it's still a good story. It's just if I had a choice between part one and part two, I'm going to choose part one because it's yeah. just a better story in my opinion. But yeah, a lot of his stuff, depending on who does Christine, who does Cujo, it really depends on who the director, writers, the people involved. If if they get the right people involved, I'm all for it. But if you tell me, hey, uh, this guy from who did this one horror movie, and it's like, okay, then it just it becomes questionable, and I start to worry about it. Well, and that's just like the whole idea of uh, The Shining. When The Shining was done, Stephen King wanted to come on and actually help, mm -hmm. you know, give give some input on things, and they kind of just turned him away toward it. And he, I mean, he hated. The Shining, which, you know, to me, I, I enjoy The Shining a little bit. I do, yeah. There, there's things about it that I don't enjoy. And, you know, it, it does drag on a little bit, but there's a lot of story to tell. And I get that. Mm. I definitely get that. That's a whole podcast on its own. But I think if they're going to have success, Stephen King's still alive. He's still kicking. He's still writing. Mm. If you're going to do a movie that's based off one of his books, be like, hey, do you want to come and, you know, check it out? See what you think of it. Give us some pointers on how you would see this take over into the real world. And I think that would be useful. Now he wrote, he wrote maximum overdrive, right? Yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah. Wrote and directed. Yeah. So he, you know, he was involved with that. And that's one of those movies that just is amazing. I don't care what anybody says about that movie. I love the movie and fun little fact, the uh, face that's on the semi mm -hmm. yeah, in that movie, that is actually owned by a guy that lives here in Ohio. No kidding. Yeah. So he found it and it was in disrepair and he, he, picked it up and he fixed it up and he actually he does show it off oh, wow. i'd have to see where it's at here in ohio i think he travels with it too as you should <laughs> but i mean well it's just like it's just like jaws you know the original uh shark mm -hmm. they they just didn't think the movie was going to be a success and they just put it in a storage lot somewhere and it got thrown out and they found it and it was in all kinds of disrepair and this guy bought it he put it up in his shop they they like spray painted the thing <laughs> and I don't even think it was like one of the, I think it was one of the original three. I think they made three of them, mm. but now they actually fixed it up and they have it hung up in a museum for cinema as it should rightfully be put. But I mean, 
it's just it's insane to think about all the things that are being made and all the things that are coming into fruition with the horror community right now and you know again that that always brings us back to the whole subgenre thing mm -hmm. i think that they have to keep creating these subgenres because there's just so much being put out into the world right now you know right. you've got your psychological stuff you've got you know supernatural things but you can tweak those and change those and make them even more different than they are already which is just mind blowing right <laughs> so, right but i mean i don't know i what do you think the most important thing is when it comes to subgenres you know what what would your takeaway be what would you tell people to think of when they think of subgenres my thing would be to just tell them don't overthink it like i'd keep it simple Sure. You know, if you want to classify something as its own thing, by all means do that. But just because something's slightly different doesn't mean you have to necessarily make it its own thing. <laughs> right. And, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with slight subgenre uh, classifications because maybe you're in the mood for something truly terrifying or truly horrifying. And if somebody said horror comedy, well, then that's not going to be exactly what you're looking for because. You don't want laughs. You want something that's truly going to just terrify you and just really get in under your skin. So you want to find something that's going to do that. Something like the conjuring that'll play with your head. If you want something psychological, if you want something gory, you go for something like saw or something like that to just where it amps up the gore factor. There are reasons for these sub genres to help you classify what you're in the mood for. But I do feel like once you start breaking it down into these tiny little bits, sometimes it just gets a little overly complicated when it doesn't need to be. Are you looking for a creature feature? Are you looking for something a little paranormal? Uh, you know, ghosts are going to cover that. You know, you don't need a subgenre just as ghosts. If you just say yeah. paranormal, it could be anything within that group. There you go. Boom. You got something you need. You're looking for found footage. That, I mean, that, that works as a subgenre. Boom. Done. You don't need it cross sectioned with, well, it's subgenre, but it's also monsters and maybe, uh, you know, slasher film underneath. Doesn't matter. Do you want found footage or not? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, I think there's a good reason for it. But based on the list that you laid out, it, it sounds a little complicated, more complicated than it needs to be. And like we always say, being a horror fan is about having fun. <laughs> right. So, but with that, I think we can close out for tonight. I think we've uh, subgenre it up quite a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. <clears throat> other than that, um, you want to tell the people where they can find us? Uh, you're much better at that than I am. <laughs> well, you can definitely follow us on Twitter at Horror Ramblings. On Twitter, we'll get that shared out every time we put out a new episode. So you can find us. We will be on Anchor. We'll be on Spotify. We'll be on Apple Podcasts. And eventually, we'll be on other platforms as time goes on. It just depends because it takes time to just get out there into the podcast universe. But once we're out there, we're out there. So you can find us. You can rate us on those podcast platforms. Spotify's got your little heart emojis. You can put your little ratings on there. Apple Podcasts always good. You can rank and rate us there too. We would appreciate some five stars if you like our, our antics, if you like our conversations. I'm sure we went way longer than anyone expected <laughs> today, but hey, it's good talks. That's what you're here for. We're going to talk about horror stuff. So go all check that out. And then obviously pencilpaperproductions.com slash horror dash ramblings. And you can find everything right there. And just stay tuned on Twitter because we will be broadcasting when we add new social media and mm -hmm. when we are releasing new episodes. Other than that, guys, make sure you stay spooky out there. This has been the Horror Ramblings Podcast. <laughs> Join us next time for even more. <laughs> this has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.